Every story I hear in my office is a story like, oh my God, I can't imagine how you went on with your life. That's trauma. Trauma is everywhere. One out of three couples engage in physical violence at least. One out of four Have people hit or beaten as One a child. out of five people has been sexually molested. More kids somewhere. die at the hands of their caregivers than die of leukemia. More than half a million kids live in foster care situations because nobody can take care of them. We tend to divide the world into patients and doctors. And people who are doctors try to talk about patients like them. But them are us. We all, we're all living with the same stuff. We're all struggling with things. As you become more and more honest with yourself, you see that it's part of your life. My dad was a very harsh guy who would lock me up in the cellar as a two-year-old kid. And I started to remember how terrified I was and how bereft I was as a little kid. And so when I saw these kids, I said, oh, I was a person to whom that happened also. Once you recognize that it's a human condition to have been badly hurt, you start becoming much more curious about different, different ways of resolving it. You know, for the past 30 years, we have studied how the brain works, but all that brain science has not really been translated into effective therapies. We don't talk about just take that pill and your misery will go away. This is about helping people to retrain their brains so that they can feel in charge of their lives. I think neurofeedback is the future. Possibilities are limitless. We did one study on neurofeedback with traumatized people, mainly adults with chronic histories of child abuse. We did 20 sessions of neurofeedback on them and they had a very significant improvement of their functioning. In neurofeedback you can very specifically focus on particular brain activities and you train the brain. Slowly the brain learns to engage in a new way and suddenly the person shifts and they start getting a life and they start feeling a sense of joy, feeling alive and engaged and it's astounding. Neurofeedback is a potentially very, very powerful treatment. What we need is not just a bunch of researchers like me in small clinics doing this, but this needs to be applied in treatment programs. You need a program like Avalon Hills in Utah, uh, run by my friend Benita Quakenberg Roberts, who actually are implementing this and trying to demonstrate how effective neurofeedback is. In order to change, people have to try out new things. We need people who are dedicated to finding solutions, who are willing to put their money where their mouth is. Up to now, the National Institutes of Mental Health, the main research arm of the government, has been unwilling to fund a single study on neurofeedback. None of this will happen as long as people sit on the fence. We have a treatment that has the promise of actually taking these brain changes and transforming them and to rewire the brain using science to change the misery that so many people live with.